And welcome. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotah V'tzivanu La'asok B'divrei Torah. Thank you. And I'm going to go into the screen share, which I hope you will see briefly. So just to catch up a little bit, we are reading this poem that Moses was told to compose as a testimony to the Jewish people uh, as to what their future was going to be depending on their behavior. So he's always said to them, you know, you have a choice, life or death, choose life. And we, we've had other kinds of statements that, that in Deuteronomy that, that clearly say in the blessing and the curse. And this is done in poetic way. And I think the hope was that, the, that he would teach this to the Jewish people and that if they sang this, if it became something like a poem that they could recite, perhaps it would prevent, would be an insurance against their having a very poor future. And um, unfortunately, of course, we know apparently it wasn't sufficiently effective. And here we are in the poem, in the middle of the poem, where basically Moses is telling them in God's name what is going to happen to them. If should they break their, break their word, break their covenant, and there will be all kinds of bad repercussions as a result of this. So that's what we're in the middle of right now. So let's take a look. We're on Kaf Dalad right here. So I'm going to look at the, the, it's in poetic language. The Hebrew is very difficult and uh, all kinds of vocabulary that, that's unusual vocabulary uh, to make this possible. Mize Rav. So again, these, these terms, Rav means a famine, right? So wasting away through famine, or Luchume Reshef, right? Ravaging plague. Again, these are not, uh, Reshef is not a common word at all. Uh, let's just keep going. The Ketiv Meriri, and uh, cutting down pestilence that from poison. Mar, mar means bitter. It can also refer to poison. Also in doing the research on this, there was a demon with this name of Ketiv Meriri. Uh, however, what we're, regardless, we're talking about destructive forces, destructive forces. The Shein Behemot and the tooth, in other words, biting of, of uh, animals, Ashalach bam, I will send amongst them. So God is describing all these horrible things that are going to happen. Im chamat, with the venom, zochale afar, with those that creep in the dust. And uh, the truth is that Onkelos is quite helpful here. Uh, he does try to interpret and explain these particular words. But we'll stick to the Rashi for the time being. Now Rashi is very busy here. Mise Rav, right? So he says, Onkelos Tergeim. Onkelos translates this into the Aramaic. He gives his actual words, Nefiche Kafan. There it is, right here in Onkelos. Nefiche Kafan. Kafan means a, a, a hunger it, it, uh, or, or famine, right? Famine. And Nefiche, I think it's related to a Hebrew word that also means, in other words, the swelling that comes about from starvation. The only aid, and Rashi personally says, I have no aid, Mochiach Alav. I don't have any other example in scripture to interpret this. This is all, you know, because so often you know, Rashi will give other examples from his incredible knowledge of the Bible, uh, where he can, he can show what words mean because he can put them in different contexts and show how they support his interpretation with a traditional interpretation. However, he goes on to say, right? Umishmo shel Rabbi Moshe Hadarshan. He's mentioned one of his teachers before, Moshe Hadarshan, Moshe, the interpreter. Me, sorry. Me, Toulouse, forgive me. Moshe Hadarshan from Toulouse. 
shamati, I heard. Seire rav, okay. Um, I'm not sure what he what he means here, but it could be sheire rav that one of the uh, symptoms perhaps of famine, adam kachush, a a um, although seire can also unfortunately it also refers to demons, but I don't know that this is that means here. Okay, adam kachush. This means like a person who is weakened. Megadel Sa'ar al Basaro. He will grow hair on his on his flesh. So 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 here he's understanding Sa'ire as Sa'ar, right? Uh, that this word means Sa'ire, uh, perhaps Mizerav, he understands as uh, hair. He's interpreting as hair. So here we go. So you can see here, mise, lashon arami. He says in Aramaic, the word mise means sa'ar, right? The, in, in Aramaic, the word sa'ar, referring to hair, is mazia, mazia. Dahava mahapech bamazia, right? So in other words, this person, I assume it means, right, he starts to grow over with hair. Uh, so, uh, Lauren, if you have, if I'm misinterpreting this, please let me know. But that's how I'm understanding. I'm trying to find the right chapter and verse. I see you're on 34. I don't know what chapter. 32, 32. Chapter 32, 34. I thought I looked there. It's actually 24, verse 24. Oh, 24. Chapter 34. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's why I can't find it. Yeah, that would make it difficult, I must admit. Um, just a second. Okay, so that's is that Rabbi E or Hamish? It's uh, I'm not sure. I'd have to go back. Twenty-four. To... Okay, they will sprout hair. That one. Yep. That was, sure. Okay, so obviously I was on the okay. right right track there. Okay. Okay, I'm in. That that's was. It. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Good. Ulechume, right? Ulechume Reshef. He says Hashedim. Interesting. So Rashi says the demons, Nilchamu Bahem are battling them. Shine'emar, as it states, and now, of course, he's giving support where he finds another verse, right? In Job 5, Uvne Reshef, Yagbihu, I finished the verse, I think, Yagbihu Of, right? So, in other words, we're saying here he's referring, right? Vne Reshef means, and the demons uh, literally, of course, it means sons of demons, but I think it just simply means demons. Yagbihu of mean literally it means they they fly high, and I think we could understand that Mary, uh, uh, you know, metaphorically. And he says vehem shedim, and that refers to to demons. So we're talking about forces, right? Outside forces that that create havoc, essentially. Ketev Mary. Oh. So, Rabbi, I just want to mention when I when I mentioned about sprouting hair, that was just the first line of the verse. But if but the Rashi before uh, before the demons Rashi, it says turning over his hair. Okay. Yeah. And but... also for the demons, mine says demons fought against them, as Scripture states, and flying creatures fly upwards. Okay. Okay. Again, you know, even the English there, I'm trying to have to interpret that. What do they mean by that? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it just says and, these are and, demons. It's from Yov. Yeah, Job. That's Job. So um, interesting. I mean, so again, you know, what it means by turning. I mean, he's, they're, they're literally translating mahapech, okay, which I can translate literally as well, but I don't think it's helpful. So I think what Rashi's trying to say is, you know, they're they're producing all this hair is what they're saying as a result of of uh, the weakness that they have, etc. So, Ketev Meriri, but thank you, Ketev Meriri, ukritot shade. So kritut means uh, again uh, destruction, uh, annihilation of a shade, a demon, Shishmo Meriri. So he's saying the Ketev refers to destruction of this demon by whose name is Meriri. Ketev Krita. He says the word Ketev means annihilation. 
Kamor, and he gives an example. Again, Rashi always is going to try. Here it uses excision. Yeah, I know. It's, but again, that's essentially what excision means, if you want to check it out in a dictionary. Yeah, but excision is annihilation through cutting. Yes, that's, that's the association. But it also has to do with cutting off. Meaning, mm -hmm. so really meaning annihilation. Mm -hmm. So I just uh, looked up Reshef. Yes. Uh, because that's the name of uh, one of my husband's grad students. So I didn't wow. want to see what it means. It wow. probably means, yeah, it means spark. Interesting. Interesting. I'll pop that in. I think I'll, I'll write that in here. Thank you. That's helpful. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see. So that's a modern Hebrew translation. Shira Beth? Um, I'm looking on Morphix, actually, which gives, uh, you know, I don't know. Did you, did you say Reshech or Reshef? Reshef. With a with th. A, okay. Th. With a th. Th. Yeah, yeah, that's what it says here. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't hear it right. Uh, although there's also a note here at the bottom that says Reshef is the name of a Canaanite god. Mm. Um, who is mentioned sometimes in Phoenician and Aramaic writings. Interesting. Uh, but, but it comes from the word, I mean, the word literally comes from Esh Nitzot Shalhevet. Okay. A spark or, or flame. Which, uh, yeah. Which do fly up. Yes, they do. Okay, I mean, I think clearly this, this is begging much more research as far as this is concerned, but it's also interesting how it's mentioned here. So let's go on. Okay, we're here in here. Okay, so, uh, so he's quoting, he says Ketef has to do with cutting off or annihilation, and he gives an example in Hosea 13. Ehe uh, kitvecha so I'd have to look up the translation of this, but basically it's saying the netherworld, Sha'ol, is is going to be where you're cut off to. Lauren, again, I'm appealing to your translation there. Yeah, and it says Kotvacha here. Okay. Kotvacha. Um let's but, see. Um I will decree the grave upon you, it says. Hmm. Okay, so he's oh, trying sorry, to... Katavka. Here it says Katavka. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I was looking at it wrong. Yeah. Katavka. Write that in. Let's pop that in there. That's the translation of the Hosea verse. Oh, de I will. De yeah, decree the grave upon you. And then the parenthetical note says in Hebrew the word. Gazera, the root is Gimel, Zion, Resh, to cut. Hence, yes. its primary meaning to cut. Okay. Uh, that must be in a different word. But anyway, okay. Well, they're talking about because it's translated as decree. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and, sure. and it's like using cut, I think. It's kind of confusing. Uh, it is. He, yeah. Okay, let's keep going. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Veshen behemot, the tooth of of uh, animals, and this is now from the Sifre Maasehaya. It so happened. It actually occurred. There was an occurrence. Bahayu harichalim that where the ewes, that is the ewe sheep, noshchin umamitim, they were actually biting and killing individuals right and you know you never expect sheep to be doing that and that's the reason why it says behemot because as you know behema usually refers sp specifically to domesticated animals to dom to cattle hamat that is it Chama could be uh the poison zohalei afar of those that creep in the dust uh eris the Hashim, Eris is poison of snakes, Hamit Halchim Al Gechonam, who go on their bellies, Al Ha'afar, on the dust, Kemayim, similar to water, Azuchalim Al Aretz, that flow on the earth. So, nice. Zechila, this word Zechila, 
Lashon Merutzat Hamayim. It has the meaning of the flow of water. That's what Zochel means. Al Ha'afar, on the earth, on the dust. V'chein kol merutzat davar hamishavshef al ha'afar. And likewise, any running thing which is rubbing on the dust, v'holech, and and continues. In other words, that's continually streaming over the over the dust. So this is going to be where we're stopping today. And with God's help, I will be prepared tomorrow to move on. This is going to come to an end. All these curses and these horrible consequences, eventually we're going to see this come to an end. And But for an interesting reason, as you'll see in the, in the poetry. So I'm going to stop the share. And if any of you have any more comments. I will... Well, I just sent you um, the further... Uh, I didn't finish reading that note. It just was getting more um, into grammar of cut and decree and all that. And um, But it's interesting. Okay. So it says, um, I had mentioned that the root of gezer to cut, yeah. um, many such roots in Hebrew in the Bible, the Mishnah and the Targum all bear the first meaning of cutting. And the second meaning of a fi final permanent decision or ruling right. among them are, and it doesn't have vowels here, but one is um, chet lamed tate. Then the next is karate, you know, which, which we know means cut. Yeah. Then chet resh sari. Then right. sari mem tof. Mm -hmm. Then gezer. Yeah. Then chet kuf kuf. And then Pesach or Pasuk. Yeah, we say about a Pesach. Yeah. Pesach din. Yes, and, if, and in the Rosh Hashanah and uh, Yom Kippur liturgy, we talk about Gazar Dinam, right? Right. Or it's their, their verdict. The government. Uh, no, in this. Or, a, a judgment, uh, sorry. Correct. correct. It judgment, means. yeah. Right. Or their punishment sometimes. Okay, we'll stop the recording here.